The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Morning here with realagriculture.com hanging out at Egg in Motion. Now, uh, we are joined now by Richard Cuthbert. He is a wheat breeder with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. How's it going today, Richard? Great. Awesome. Now, you just did a presentation for folks here at AIM talking about, of course, wheat breeding. What is on the docket? What's in the pipeline? What are you guys currently working on as far as wheat varieties? Well, I think it's always bigger, better, stronger, faster. So we're looking for higher yielding, better disease resistance, especially for priority traits like Fusarium head blight, stripe rust resistance, and meeting the end use quality, uh, typically Canada Western Red Springs. Now for people who are unaware, I just learned this as well. This isn't a short process. So <laughs> something that you know producers or consumers might identify as a need or a want, this isn't something that can have turnover the next year. Explain a little bit of the wheat breeding process and timelines on that. For sure. You need almost a crystal ball to be able to uh, guess what's going to be needed from 10 years from now. So the crosses we make today in 2022 will be coming into the market in 2030, 2032 really. So you need to anticipate what, what's going to be needed then. So that that's threats of pests, threats of disease, and what changes to end use marketing could could happen. So um, the fortunate thing is we try to do this continually. We're doing the cross crossing process every year. We're doing early generation development every year and we're running advanced and registration tests every year. So we anticipate that we have what's needed in the pipeline to respond to those challenges uh, before they're really known. So. And then how much of that is, is, is split up uh, regionally as well? I presume, I mean, like you're from the Palliser Triangle region, that those varieties uh, would have differences than out in Manitoba or somewhere else. Yes, so we work quite closely with our sister stations, uh, like Dr. Santosh Kumar and the Brandon Research Station, uh, Dr. Harpenter Randawa and Lethbridge, uh, and the universities even, the University of Saskatchewan, University of Alberta Breeders, and the University of Manitoba. We work together, uh, we share testing networks, uh, disease nurseries, uh, and we work together to, to meet those needs. We're really looking for varieties that have a broad adaptation. So whether you're in Swift Current or in the Red River Valley, those lines will do well. And varieties like AAC Brandon, like AAC Wheatland, uh, are examples of that broad adaptation. Absolutely. So what are you guys hearing for feedback from growers on some of these main concerns? FHB came up a lot today today. Um, what are some other concerns that you guys are actively working on to try to find a solution for? Well, we can't predict the growing environment next year. You know, 2021, we had extreme droughts across the prairies. In 2022, we're seeing droughts, early droughts in the Swift Current area, excess moisture in Manitoba and eastern Saskatchewan. So we, we need to be able to uh, develop varieties that can handle these extremes. And we don't know what 2023 will bring, but uh, we're confident based on the registration testing uh, and selecting for broad adaptation material at a range of sites across Western Canada that will have varieties to serve those extremes in the future. For sure and then on the flip side of that the consumer side, retail side, mar marketing side, what are some of those requirements that are coming down the pipeline that they're saying hey th this wheat needs to hit these markers? Yes so a lot of a uh, lot to do with climate change uh, better uh, use efficiency varieties, whether it's water use efficiency or nitrogen use efficiency. We are uh, hearing things like reduced nitrogen use across the prairies. So we're looking for varieties, again, in those range of environments, whether you're more uh, in input intensive or whether you're at a, a lower rate of nitrogen, uh, you'll still be able to meet the, the grain protein and have yields that are, are uh, economically viable for your operation. For sure. And what are the varieties that you guys are working on now? Today we talked a lot about Brandon. That's been in circulation for a long time now. Yes. Um, and it's quite popular. You also talked yeah. about uh, AAC Viewfield and also AAC uh, Wheatland. Talk yes. a little bit about those varieties. So Wheatland's been in production since about 2015 as well. Um, it's done very well. We have some new ones on the market. AAC Starbuck, uh, very good for FHB resistance. AAC Wheatland, uh, more broadly adapted and very strong strawed in comparison to Star 
Starbuck, but you can't really lose with either. We also have AAC Broad Acres that has very good stripe rust resistance, very strong straw, and all of those uh, Starbuck Wheatland and Broad Acres have the SM1 gene that confers resistance to orange wheat blossom midge. So uh, we've ticked a lot of boxes in those. We're confident that some of these will be brand and replacements going forward. And plant breeding is likely going nowhere anytime <laughs> soon, but talk a little bit about maybe the future of wheat breeding or, you know, seed editing, I believe is what we were uh, talking about. Gene editing. Gene editing so yeah. that that, uh, that has a lot of promise. Uh, th there's about 120,000 genes in hexaploid or bread wheat that we know. Um, we don't know the function of all of them, unfortunately, so there's a lot of studies ongoing to really understand uh, each gene and how it fits together in the puzzle. Um, and until we, uh, that's happening now, but uh, gene editing uh, will allow us to uh, edit certain ones, certain genes, and hopefully make those uh, improvements without having to go through an entire breeding cycle. So for simple fixes uh, with a known gene, gene editing has a lot of potential. Uh, the traditional plant breeding, wheat breeding process, uh, we can work with a number of traits at a time and make larger improvements for a number of traits. So I see gene editing as part of the toolbox of the wheat breeding community and it will will uh, show promise in the near future. Awesome, great, thanks so much yeah. for joining us today. Thank you.